everyone, happy to see you again. We are back with the latest Asian news. With me, Vanessa. UN calls on South Korea to investigate crime of fishermen's death committed by North Korean troops. In a statement on Twitter, the United Nations Human Rights Office in South Korea calls for an impartial investigation for the killing of South Korea fishermen by North Korea troops at sea where he was found floating in the North Korean waters nearly 36 hours after he went missing. Lee Rajin tells to Reuters in Seoul office of the United Nations High Commissioners for Human Rights he wants to expose North Korea's atrocities and ask for a fair and objective investigations by the United Nations. I came to make public North Korea's atrocities to the international community and submit a request to the United Nations with the hope to turn my brother's unfortunate sacrifice into a new path of peace. The South Korean government says their investigation suggests that Lee wants to defect to the North, but his family disputed that. The United Nations Human Rights Office in Seoul says both Koreas are obligated to carry out a prompt, impartial and effective investigation and to make the findings public, but no mentions of the United Nations playing a role. Malaysian Prime Minister quarantines after Minister test positive for coronavirus. Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin says he goes into quarantine for 14 days after coming into contact with a minister who had tested positive for COVID-19. After he had been at meeting with the Religious Affairs Minister Zulkifli Muhammad al-Bakri to discuss the rising number of coronavirus infections and Zulkifli tested positive two days later after their meeting. When Muhyiddin with Zulkifli and other ministers all went to Sabah to campaign during its elections and were criticized for not going into quarantine after returning. The government has also drawn criticism for not enforcing mandatory two-week quarantine for everyone returning from Sabah. Only those who tested positive for the virus were required to isolate. So far, Malaysia reported 432 new cases of coronavirus infections. The survivors of Hiroshima Nagasaki contenders for the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize. Survivors of the atomic bombing in the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are considered a possible contender for the 2020 Nobel Peace Prize. At 8.15 a.m. on August 6, 1945, a bomb nicknamed Little Boy was dropped by the United States P-29 warplane and obliterated the city of Hiroshima, instantly killing about 78,000 people. Three days after the Hiroshima attack, on August 9, 1945, the United States dropped another atomic bomb on Nagasaki, southern Japan. Japan surrendered six days later, ending the military aggression that brought it into World War II. In the aftermath of the bombings, survivors have spoken out, urging the world to rid itself of nuclear weapons. Japan commemorated the 75th anniversary of the bombing of the two cities this year, albeit with scaled-back ceremonies due to the coronavirus pandemic. The 2020 Nobel Peace Prize will be announced in Oslo at the Norwegian Nobel Institute. China's economic recovery from COVID-19 to benefit neighboring Asian economies. According to a news report on CNBC website, China's economic recovery from the novel coronavirus had brightened the economic outlooks for its neighboring countries and they are set to benefit from it. David Chow, a global market strategist for Asia-Pacific at Invesco tells to CNBC, China's economic recovery will lift surrounding Asian economies to a certain extent. He adds in a particular that the focus is on whether the Chinese consumers can quickly return back to normalized activity and the growth of the Purchasing Managers Index PMI, for Chinese manufacturing sector. The data records by Invesco shows the restaurant books and tourist arrivals have locked record high during the ongoing eight-day holiday. Ticket bookings show on online travel platforms exceeded the same period last year, with the year-on-year -year growth reaching a record high of 100%. Chow is optimistic about the performance of Chinese equities, expecting it will outperform developed market equities because China has been showing a continued V-shaped rebound. South Korean arrest Indonesian man who escaped from quarantine. 
local media report that South Korean police catches an Indonesian seaman in the city of Cheongju who busts out of the South Korean coronavirus quarantine facility before a day he completes a mandatory two weeks in isolation. The suspect to have dug a hole in the dirt under the makeshift shelter that serves as a part of quarantine facility attached to a hotel in the capital Seoul. 서울 중구에 소재한 임시 생활 시설에 Indonesia An Indonesian escaped from the temporary quarantine facility in Junggu by digging under the barrier of the main gate of the first floor. The escaper entered the country on a ship crew visa and was entered to the temporary quarantine facility and scheduled to leave. But he leaves before a day. He escapes from the quarantine. The person had tested negative for the coronavirus and showed no symptoms during the isolation period. Official says authorities suspect the man who had entered the country on a ship crew visa intended to illegally stay in South Korea, as there had been several similar incidents involving Vietnamese nationals in recent months. Every person arriving in South Korea from overseas is required to undergo two weeks of isolation to prevent the spread of a new coronavirus regardless of whether they have COVID-19 symptoms. Thailand survivors celebrate university massacre for the 44 times. Thailand paid respect to victim of 1976 massacre of pro-democracy student by state forces as their recent surge in the student-led protest give new resonance to memories of that bloody day. The survivor, Wichian Visutanakong, recalled that bloodshed as people laid flowers at the Tamnatsat University monument. <laughs> The women I helped checks that had fallen off, the blood stains on my pants, the pain my friends and I feel when we were beating up still haunt me. I always feel sorrow deep down as we, the Thais, are in the Buddhist country. The worst is those people who commit those crimes are still proud and don't regret their actions. On October 6, 1976, state forces and royalist mobs attacked a group of about 2,000 students inside Thammasat University in Bangkok and hanged a shot or beat to death dozens of students accusing them of sympathizing with revolutions sweeping through Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos at the time. This year's memorial ceremony drew younger sympathizers after nearly three months of street protest against the government, with some protesters also calling for reforms to curb the powers of King Mahavajira Longkorn. Now we are repeating history. This coming October 14 is like to be the same as in 1976. I'm worried that it might turn violent like it did in 1976, but it might also be less violent as these days. However, some protesters are still dealing with a lot of harassment, including travel and personal restrictions. The anti-government protests are the biggest challenge in years to a ruling establishment long dominated by the army and the powerful monarchy. The protests gather paid campaigners who seek reforms have planned a major demonstration on October 14. Thailand's new students graduate worries on the future because of global pandemic. More than 500,000 Thailand students are graduate in this season. Because of the COVID-19 crisis is casting a shadow over graduate futures, they're facing a shrinking economy and emerging political crisis, therefore it's hard to find job. Most of students from Chula Longkorn University has had graduation ceremony, are hopeful and worry about their future. Chalisa Uriya Tamrong graduating from a top university doesn't automatically mean getting a fresh start in the job market. There is an opportunity for me, so many people need jobs right now. I don't want to ask for money from my family, but jobs are hard to find. It puts a lot of pressure on me to find a job, so I feel defeated. The director of the Office of Police Project Administration says the government has created a job, approved employment and subsidy programs to help students graduate in all unemployment. The government is creating jobs not only for graduates but also those who are now unemployed. 
All the ministries are working together and we have created hundreds of thousands of jobs for people impacted from COVID-19. Meanwhile, Tanit Sorat, the vice chairman of Employers Confederation of Thailand Trade and Industry, says hundreds of thousands are adding to the pool of millions of unemployed in a country with threadbare welfare system that impacted by COVID-19 may be determined by what happened next. Mike Pompeo seeks support from Asian allies to against China. United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo rallies support from Washington's closest allies in Asia, calling for deeper collaboration with Japan, India and Australia against China's growing regional influence. When we met now last year, the landscape was very different. We couldn't have imagined a pandemic that came from Wuhan. That crisis was made infinitely worse by the Chinese Communist Party's cover-up. The regime's authoritarian nature led its leaders to lock up and silence the very brave Chinese citizens who were raising the alarm. America stands with each of you as we work to achieve victory over this horrible pandemic and rebuild our economies together. As partners in this squad, it is more critical now than ever that we collaborate to protect our people and partners from the CCP's exploitation, corruption, and coercion. Japanese Foreign Minister says the subjects of the meeting are fundamental values of democracy, rule, law, and free economy. We, the four nations, share the same fundamental values of democracy, rule of law, and free economy. We, as responsible partners in the region, share a common goal to enhance a free and open international order abiding by the rules. A free and open Indo-Pacific framework will be a big part to achieve this goal. In addition, Australian Foreign Minister says they are working together to promote an open, inclusive and resilient Indo-Pacific. This important step in the continuing evolution of the Quad signals our steadfast commitment to working together to promote an open, inclusive and resilient Indo-Pacific. The Quad has a positive agenda. It's a diplomatic network that assists us as democracies to align ourselves in support of shared interests. We believe in a region governed by rules, not power. Meanwhile, Indian Foreign Minister says the meeting to discuss about cooperation, development, stability and prosperity of the region. I look forward to our discussions today on important issues such as connectivity, infrastructure development, security, including counterterrorism, cyber and maritime security, health cooperation, and the stability and prosperity of the region. Washington has been looking to build support among Asian allies against Beijing. Analysts have said China's neighbors want to avoid a direct confrontation because of economic ties. China has denounced the Quad as an attempt to contain its development. Indonesia workers protest against new labor law. Police and demonstrators clash in Indonesian cities on the third day of protest and a strike again of polarizing new jobs law passed in the Southeast Asia's largest economy. The omnibus jobs creation bill passed into law have thousands of people across the world's fourth most populous nation take to the streets in protest against legislation. According to the police spokespeople, around 1,000 protesters detained in Jakarta and more than 100 others arrested in other cities. Reuters witness says hundreds of demonstrators gather near the presidential palace in central Jakarta shouting and throwing stones. Police fired tear gas and water cannon in attempt to disperse the crowd. Black smokes rose across the capital as protesters burned public transportation facilities and damaged the police post. The operator of Jakarta's MRT rail network says underground station has been closed. The government of President Joko Widodo has championed the legislation as key to boosting Indonesia's ailing economy by cutting red tape and attracting more foreign direct investment. Nigerian and South Korean are finalists to become the next Director General of the World Trade Organization. 
World Trade Organization spokesman says Nigeria's Ngozi Okonjo Iweala and South Korean's Yom Yong Hee are the finalists to become the next Director General of the World Trade Organization. The recommendation is that Ngozi Okonjo Iweala of uh, Nigeria and Korean Minister Yu Myung Hee will advance to the third and final stage of consultations. The third stage will run from the 19th of October to the 27th of October. Keith Rockwell says the third and final stage of the run will take place from October 19 to October 27 and that a decision should be made by November 7, 2020. Uh, we are supposed to have had a decision by uh, the 7th of November, two months from the start of this consultation process. We are on track for that. Um, exactly when this will take place, I do not know. What the chair has just said is that following the, the, um, the completion of these consultations on the 27th of October, he will call a heads of delegation very shortly thereafter. Um, today was less than 24 hours after that. I don't know when this will be. That might occur as the United States presidential elections will start four days before the deadline for the decision. I don't think that's, I don't think the, the domestic political situation of any country has really entered into this at all, as far as I can tell. Um, the process is very clear. It says there's a two-month period for consultations. We're right on schedule for this. Um, we might even be a little bit ahead of schedule. So we can go t under the guidelines to the 7th, but it might, it might be before then, uh, based on what the chair just said today. Well, that's all for today. Thank you and see you.